Dr. Tavares, are there differences in the genetic and molecular subtypes of AML among different population groups? And how do these differences influence disease progression, response to treatment, and survival outcomes? That is a great question. We know that in acute myeloid leukemia in general, the, the molecular characteristics and genetic characteristics are of prognostic and therapeutic value. We do know that Black patients have a higher risk of poor risk cytogenetics and a higher risk of not responding to treatment, as well as a higher risk of complications from treatment. Some of my work actually also evaluated that Hispanic patients with comorbidities fared uh, much worse than other populations with comorbidities. So we always have to think about the patient as a whole and um, provide care that, you know, targets the leukemia, but also take into consideration all of the characteristics of our patients that we are serving. Some of our patients may have a higher difficulty accessing care, or continuing care, obtaining their medications, and that too may impact their treatment outcomes. My activation tip for this question would be to communicate with your providers if you have any barriers to care. Things like transportation, things like cost of medication may not seem to a patient as though they're important to bring up to the provider, but it is really important to bring up these barriers. Um, as there are things that may be done from, from the perspective of the hospital, perhaps they can connect you with uh, financial assistance programs that may help with transportation. There's different societies that can help with that. Some of the pharmaceutical companies can help with that too. So there's a lot. Of, there are a lot of barriers to care that come from the patient's socioeconomic circumstances, which is not necessarily specific to race or ethnicity, but may be associated since we know that you know some of our minorities will will live in places where where they're the below the poverty index and. And if we don't help them with these things, they might not have the best outcome. If you mm -hmm. have a patient who does have some, some kind of barrier to access, whether it's to their medications or to getting to treatment transportation, can they talk with you or the nurse or is there a social worker at most facilities? Who would they mention that to if they had an issue with access? I think that the best thing is to mention it to everyone that you encounter in the healthcare system. Uh, definitely in certain systems, the social worker may take charge of uh, connecting the patient with resources that are available. In my institution, we have a navigator that also helps connect patients to resources. Um, but also as a provider, I've been in the position of sharing, you know, names and contacts of certain institutions that may be able to help the patient. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to tell the names here. So, um uh, but um, so they, there definitely may be things available for the patient that different members of the team may be knowledgeable about. So my recommendation would be to mention whatever barrier you have to each person that is connecting with you from your healthcare team, social worker, medical assistant, nurse, doctor. The more people you mention it to, the higher the likelihood that it will be taken care of. <laughs>